All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, if you are here, uh, I want to congratulate you. you. You have found one of the great Easter eggs of the OpenStack Summit. So if you have avoided all of the uh, attention to happy hours and all of the events that are happening at this time of day at the end of day one, uh, and now you're catching up on the video stream at the back of the room, uh, I'll still give you credit. You still, you still found the Easter egg. But this is going to be a, a very uh, critical and key presentation. By the end of it, we will be uh, giving details about uh, the 10,000 node developer cloud um, that was mentioned in Ahmad Susu's uh, keynote this morning uh, and lets people know how developers can get access to a, the world's largest developer environment to test code for performance and scale in a way that's never been available before. So that is the Easter egg. If you're here, congratulations on finding it. If you're watching it on video, congratulations for finding it. But uh, it's a very important announcement uh, that's uh, part of the broader deck. We'll start with uh, introductions. So I'm Darren Hansen. I'm the VP and GM of OpenStack Private Cloud at Rackspace. So we have a team that is focused on the design, build, deployment, and then the ongoing operations of OpenStack clouds. For customers that want to run OpenStack in either a Rackspace data center or one of their data centers and are looking for an operating partner that will be there with them uh, all along the way for patching, maintenance, upgrades, and uh, really uh, an extension of their IT team going forward into perpetuity. So uh, that's a little bit about uh, my role in my team. And uh, Rushi and David, why don't you guys introduce yourselves as well? Sure. Uh, I'm Ruchi Bhargav. I work for Intel in its software solutions uh, group in the Open Source Technology Center. I'm director of engineering for data center and cloud software engineering. And uh, I'm basically uh, accountable for engineering uh, which, uh, of the joint engineering effort, which we do with Rackspace as part of this initiative. David? My name is David Brown. I'm the director of data center software planning in the Open Source Technology Center under Ahmad Susu. And I'm also the alliance manager on the engagement we're going to talk to you about today, the, the Intel Rackspace engagement. So, perfect. So, and, and that's a good point. I'm also the alliance manager on the Rackspace side for the Intel and Rackspace relationship. And what we're here to talk about today is a broad umbrella that is uh, referred to as the OpenStack Innovation Center. And uh, we will give you a complete overview and rundown of, of everything that this partnership between Intel and Rackspace brings to the OpenStack community. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to let David spend a few minutes talking about uh, the Cloud for All initiative at Intel and how this collaboration fits into the Cloud for All initiative at Intel. I'll take back over and walk you through uh, the, the mission and vision of uh, our overall partnership. Uh, Rushi's going to spend some time talking about uh, our joint roadmap and uh, some of the work that we've already done relative to advancing important projects inside of OpenStack and addressing some of the important bugs that are irritants for many of our, of our uh, combined customers. Uh, and then we'll talk about, at the end, uh, the shared cluster that is now available for the development community, um, which we uh, launched earlier this morning and is now live for members of the community to use. So David, why don't you start by giving us an overview of Cloud for All. Okay, so Cloud for All. You heard a lot about Cloud for All this morning from Ahmad Susu during his keynote, and frankly, if you were in the, the class right before this one in this room, you heard a lot about it as well. So three times a charm, I guess. You know, uh, You'll, you'll have it embedded in your mind. Basically, what, what Intel Cloud for All is, and, and the reason I want to explain what it is, because it's, it's the foundation for the relationship we have with Rackspace. Intel Cloud for All is really Intel's initiative to unleash thousands of clouds that are being pent up to be built and deployed inside of organizations across the world. It, basically, it's based on the premise that by 2020, there'll be 50,000 connected devices, 50 million connected devices, 50 billion connected devices. Um, and also that 85% of all applications will be cloud apps. And with that, there's a great pent up demand for roughly 40 to 45,000 clouds to be deployed. And that there's science behind that number of 40 to 45,000 corporations across the world who have an opportunity to deploy clouds. So the, we're excited about what, what there is to offer and, there's, and we're excited about what the ecosystem can benefit from with this opportunity for cloud deployments. But we just frankly don't think it's going quick enough. It's, the, the, it's fragmented in some areas. It's complex to install. It's complex to, to deal with. And frankly, there's some features still lacking. Now, a lot of this has been worked on over the past couple of years in the various work groups 
and various organizations that have taken enterprise readiness to heart and really want to drive it home and make it, make it happen. And there's been a lot of progress made, but there's still work to be done. And that's why you're going to hear about what we've got underway here to, to get that work done. Um, there's, there's three pillars that make up Cloud for All. One is invest in the ecosystem. The second is optimize for, for the right workloads and the right opportunities for cloud deployments. And the third is align the, the industry around cloud development and cloud de de deployments. The rack space engagement with Intel is pretty much centered in the invest arena, where we're investing together in the way of engineering headcount, equipment for de development clusters, and training programs to make this a reality and to really be able to bring this home for the sake of the community and for the sake of cloud deployments and worldwide. So with that, I'm going to let Darren drive into more detail on the engagement, and we'll, we'll take it from there. Perfect. OK, I'm going to do the manual advancement. So uh, you know, Rackspace, as we've been out working with our customers on a, on a daily basis uh, and over the last couple of years, actually, deploying OpenStack clouds for uh, companies that range from you know, the Fortune 10 uh, down to upper mid-market and uh, serving our customers, we've also had a lot of partnerships come across our desk as well. And the reason that the Intel partnership is so compelling for Rackspace uh, is because Intel and Rackspace share a couple of key philosophies that really drive this mission. Um, the, those two philosophies are, number one, that we are both heavily invested in seeing the adoption of OpenStack go more quickly. Uh, and to do that, we know that certain features and functionality and uh, the, the, the hard work of addressing some of the bugs that, uh, that exist in the software have to be addressed because we want to see uh, institutions and companies adopt this technology faster. Um, for Intel, that means that uh, they can optimize their Intel platforms and chipsets and silicon for OpenStack. And as these clouds get adopted, uh, they will surely enjoy uh, you know, the, the fruits of that growth from the standpoint of the products and services that they are optimizing for customers every day. For Rackspace, we are looking to grow the, the, the pie, if you will, of customers that are seeking an operating partner, that are looking for the ongoing service and support associated with delivering these OpenStack clouds uh, for our customers every day uh, and simplifying the complexity of deploying OpenStack, getting started with OpenStack, and getting started on their cloud journey. So the second key philosophy that Intel and Rackspace share is that we are both passionate about um, the open standard and uh, avoiding vendor lock-in. Neither one of us is interested in creating a new distribution of OpenStack. Um, all the work that we are going to do together on a joint roadmap uh, bug fixes go without saying, but all, all of the work that we are going to do together on a joint roadmap, um, each of us are uniquely committed to making sure that everything that we do together gets contributed back upstream to the community, and that we're both very interested, as you'll see, in working with the community to advance these, these agendas that we both see and we both have, working with the community to make sure that uh, it, it is a tied effort with the foundation and by no means anything where, you know, it's, it's a couple of companies trying to go our own way. So the areas of focus, uh, when Rushi gets up here and talks in a few moments about the shared roadmap, um, where we want to focus the investments, focus the resources, and focus the people from both sides of the house are on these key illities, if you will. Uh, the manageability of OpenStack, the ease of upgrades, scalability and growth, uh, reliability and high availability of these platforms, security of the OpenStack platform. And again, you know, you'll, you'll see how many uh, bugs we've already worked together. Uh, we're both committed to you know, the, the hard work of operating OpenStack and what it means to um, go back and you know, everybody's interested in doing new feature work. And that's, there's, there's a lot of great work that happens every day relative to the next big thing, the next new feature. I think everyone, though, is also hearing those users that are actually deploying OpenStack are looking for more um, of the heavy lifting of just fix a lot of the bugs that exist within the, the, the platform as it exists today and address some of those things that are causing pain. So the OpenStack Innovation Center has five critical objectives or pillars, if you will, um, guiding principles that really direct our two companies. The first is, and David alluded to it, uh, we are going to recruit, hire, and train 
a next generation of OpenStack developers. So this morning in the, in the keynote uh, by Jonathan, he talked about the, the gap, the talent gap with people that can develop inside of OpenStack. And so uh, Rackspace and Intel, Intel has committed over the course of the next uh, three years to add to the number of developers of upstream OpenStack to the tune of hundreds. Um, and when you combine that with the additional growth that Rackspace will experience, we are both committed to bringing on more talent, new resources to join the OpenStack community. And what we're doing is we are welcoming them to a physical and virtual place in our headquarters in San Antonio where we will, we have created um, and, and already launched a multiple module training program that teaches these new developers, first of all, if they're new to OpenStack, we have to teach them the fundamentals of OpenStack, but then we walk them through uh, how to develop in OpenStack, how to write code for OpenStack, how to contribute, how to get your code uh, reviewed, how to get your code accepted. Um, and then the end module is actually teaching those developers how to be mentors for the next bastion of developers that are coming in the door. So uh, we've already welcomed uh, on site uh, our first dozen or so uh, Intel new developers. Uh, we have also have 15 more starting on November 9th. So on a monthly cadence, you're going to see us add between 10 and 15 new developers to this, uh, to this community and put them through a very specific training program for how to become effective contributors. The next stage of this, and, and when, I, when I direct you later to the website that you can use to get more information, the next phase of this training will be we want to work with other companies and individuals that are interested in either becoming OpenStack developers, improving their OpenStack development skills, or want to invest in you know, their own uh, set of developers that know how to affect the upstream and uh, influence the community. We're very interested in, in companies, individuals, and institutions that are willing to send people to San Antonio to go through some of this training curriculum that we think is very compelling um, and very effective in creating the developers of the future. The second uh, guiding principle is that everything we do will align with the foundation. And I'm going to talk about that more specifically on another slide, um, but it, it speaks to the commitment of making sure that this is done in partnership with the foundation and far from uh, in departure from the foundation. Third is a focus on the shared agenda. Um, I talked about the, the uh, key work areas of the illities that we're going to be focused on. Uh, Rushi will come back up here in a few moments, and Rushi is going to be able to walk you through not only the bugs that we've already worked as part of that shared agenda, but uh, a shared roadmap for the M and N uh, OpenStack releases of what our teams are going to be working on side by side to advance the ball. Uh, fourth, and you'll, you'll hear me say this a couple of times, Rushi will reiterate it, everything that we do uh, will be contributed back upstream. Uh, not interested in creating proprietary code, not interested in creating lock-in, not interested in creating new distributions. And then finally, uh, I think hopefully what a lot of people are interested in is uh, together um, the two companies are building out the world's largest developer test cloud. Uh, it's going to be a 2,000 physical node environment. 1,000 nodes are already online in a Dallas-Fort Worth data center hosted by Rackspace. Um, another thousand are coming online in Oakland, California uh, that will be uh, supplied by Intel. That next thousand nodes will be on site by the end of the year. And this is the unprecedented environment where we can collaborate with all other institutions in the community. And we're doing some really compelling and groundbreaking things. Marantis was up here on the session before talking about what they're doing. Uh, Red Hat's doing a lot of interesting work with, uh, with Intel as part of the Cloud for All initiative. Uh, we're going to be uh, kind of opening up to anyone, regardless of, of different agendas that these companies may have, but that are all focused on the same goal of advancing the roadmap, advancing the features, um, and advancing the community. And it's going to be a, a great collaboration between companies, but the real invitation is for anyone in the community. Um, we will share at the end of the presentation a link that you can go to. If you're interested in joining us on this journey, if you're interested in joining us on the roadmap, and you have uh, either tied directly to our roadmap or you'd like to make a proposal for a capability or feature that you'd like to have access to resources to test your own code, test it at scale, and test it uh, at an unprecedented performance capability, uh, it's going to be an open environment where we're going to invite anyone with a good idea uh, to, come in, to come in the door. And David will talk a little bit about the governance process for that uh, towards the end of the presentation. So I talked about recruit, hire, and train. 
Um, and what each one of the, uh, the developers coming into the program will learn. When you look at this picture here, uh, in the background of the, the picture, this was the ribbon cutting ceremony of the OpenStack Innovation Center at our headquarters in San Antonio uh, in September. And that group in the back is the first set of uh, Intel developers that hit the ground in San Antonio. They are an incredibly uh, engaged and motivated group of people. Um, we're very, very excited to have them uh, on site at Rackspace and very excited to receive the, uh, the next cohorts that come through starting in November. Uh, and at the end of the presentation, we'll also show you a brief uh, video that gives you a behind the scenes peek uh, and gives you a sense for the fact that the OpenStack Innovation Center as a place and as a, a physical space for collaboration uh, is very real and off to a great start. Aligning with the foundation, uh, this is the second guiding principle. Um, this is both a top-down and bottoms-up approach to working with the community to make sure that what we are working on together is validated by others that are working on OpenStack every day. So uh, each of us, uh, each of our companies has uh, members of uh, the enterprise working group, the operators working group, and the product working group. All three of those teams, uh, we, we work very closely with those uh, communities to get feedback on our roadmap. Are we working on the right things that customers are interested in? Are we working on the right features that are going to advance the adoption of this platform? And at the same time that we're working with those groups in the OpenStack Foundation, again, we're going to be engaging the community from a uh, bottoms-up perspective, inviting individual contributors and individual participants in the community to come to us with their ideas. You can either review the roadmap and say, I would like to get involved in that in a very specific way, uh, or the, the intake process will also allow members of the community to make a proposal. Uh, hey, I'd like to test this new feature. I'd like to test this new capability. Not necessarily represented by your roadmap, but I'm willing to make a case that uh, if you give me resources, um, I will bring the ideas and I will bring my talent and we will invite them in to collaborate with us to, uh, to drive all kinds of new ideas um, using the resources that we have available to us. So by working top down, by working bottom up, um, this will all uh, revolve around a six to 12 month rolling roadmap, which you'll see here. You'll see the first iteration of that roadmap here in a moment of the, um, the first set of priorities that we have for the M and N releases. Um, the ongoing recruitment and training uh, of adding talent to the wheel and adding talent to the virtuous development cycle and the 2000 node cluster that we are bringing online. So it's a, uh, just a, a, a huge effort, but it's also uh, going to be a very collaborative effort with everybody involved in the community. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rushi, and she's going to talk a little bit about the shared agenda and uh, the roadmap and the bug work that we've already done. Thanks, Darren. So uh, this roadmap, which you see up here, uh, was put together, uh, you know, when we announced this uh, partnership was uh, in July, end of July. Uh, it took a month or so to work together, get our teams kicked off, and we basically aligned to the different releases of OpenStack. Given that, uh, if you look, uh, Liberty release uh, and the, where we are now, Tokyo, we spent a lot of time recruiting people and uh, getting the cluster set up. Uh, as Darren talked about, the first cluster is already up and running in uh, Dallas-Fort Worth. Second one is being set up in uh, Oakland, California. And the first, uh, once we got the first round of people, new people, new to OpenStack folks hired, situated in San Antonio, uh, we ran a joint training program, Rackspace uh, training, put together uh, you know, how to contribute to OpenStack, how to, uh, different uh, in-depth overview of the different components of OpenStack. And uh, within Rackspace and Intel, we identified uh, the critical bugs which would be required to be fixed in order for enterprise adoption to go up. So current initiatives which have been working, uh, both at Intel and Rackspace, uh, there are certain bugs which were in the critical list. Uh, our teams, both at Intel and Rackspace, put that together, and that is the focus of this initiative here. Then phase two, which will begin after the summit here, when people go back after uh, doing the different design sessions at the summit, will uh, consist uh, of focus on rolling upgrades, reliability and scalability, and I'll go in a little bit, I'll show you the details uh, on the next slide. And uh, 
phase three would be again continuous hardening in terms of more bug fixes, but focus on HA security and compliance. And uh, you can, and basically we tie it up to the different releases of OpenStack. Doesn't work? Okay. The L is go back. And uh, so th this is basically the phase one, phase two, phase three. Uh, oh, actually, not this. This is the shared uh, bugs uh, focus. Uh, if you notice, the total number of bugs which we had listed was 560, not a small number. A uh, new group of people, along with the existing Intel and Rackspace employees, worked together. Uh, we had 241 already in the queue, 211 closed, and 108 are being worked. So. If we finish uh, these 108 which are being worked, pretty much half of those 560 bugs will be fixed in this. It's a pretty good accomplishment and I think the team needs to be thanked for it. And this is the shared agenda for in terms of the roadmap. And uh, you know, I'm not going to go over the list of items, but in terms of manageability, a good focus has been in the community on putting together uh, rolling upgrades, for example. Rolling upgrades, uh, one of the key methods which the, at least with, from Intel's perspective, what I've been aware of is the versioned objects implementation in the core services which are required for anybody to upgrade uh, with zero downtime. And then hardening of the online schema migration. This is again a holding thing which will prevent us from doing rolling upgrades. And then uh, uh, anti-affinity rules being set up. And then uh, if you can look the details between reliability, uh, scalability, and uh, security and compliance. So if you have any questions of, about the line items here, feel free to contact me, uh, Jason uh, from uh, Rackspace, Bevo, uh, folks from Intel, Arik and uh, Shane are all here. So you know, the purpose of this agenda is it's going to be updated uh, at six month cadence, but we will be revising and reviewing it every three months as part of a review forum. And uh, you know, those of you who were here at the presentation prior to this, the Mirantis Intel presentation, uh, we, there's also a similar roadmap there and we are working actually together, Rackspace, Intel and Mirantis, so that uh, the focus being enterprise adoption to drive up, uh, eliminate the gaps, we, uh, that's going to be the focus here. So if you have any features, gaps, which you would like to put in, contact us. So contribute all, up, all the work upstream, that's something which Darren's been talking about. This is not about you know, creating a distribution downstream, it's more about everything what we are going to do as part of this initiative is going to be upstream. So contributors, it's who we are, and contribute is what we shall do. So that's the mantra which our teams will be living up and working with. So. Uh, I think I'm going to pass it on to David, who's going to talk about the L is going back, forward. Thanks, Rishi. Okay, so one of the things when the, the Rackspace Intel engagement was announced that, that got some press was this environment, this 2000 node cluster. And from what I heard through the various work groups and so forth is that there was a lot of interest in the foundation and in the community for what this meant, what, how could I get access to it? What does this mean for me? Is it, is it something that's protected by armed guards and so forth? So we really want to try to take out the mystery of what this is all about. Like Derek, Darren said, it's a, it's, it's a 2000 node cluster funded by Intel, supported, maintained by Rackspace. So when you use the cluster, for t testing or patch testing, you'll be supported by the, uh, the, Racks the Rackspace team who will be supporting the cluster. Um, multiple provisioning options to be made available. This, the standard load will be available, the, the Rackspace standard load will be available at the get-go. And this is a, a not, not distribution, but it's based off a trunk. If you need a certain environment, we can take down the, the the environment off the nodes that you need and we can put a different environment on there. We, we understand that there's f flexibility and many options in the, in the industry and we want to make sure that we, we allocate for that. And then it's geo-distributed. Um, a thousand nodes in Oakland, a thousand nodes in Dallas, and therefore testing for cross-geo scalability as well. 
So we, with the vision that we have here, one of the things that we feel pretty strongly about is that scalability, testing in general is important for OpenStack, but scalability is where rubber is, meets the road and where we've heard a lot of challenges and folks saying that they just can't scale OpenStack beyond 50, 100, 200 nodes. So we've got 2,000 nodes that can open itself up for testing and scalability opportunities. And we ask you to make use of it as much as possible. The 1,000 node cluster dream reality when you commit to upstream. One of the things you're going to see in the governance slide, and I know that sometimes when you see slides of this, it makes you want to run out, run out of the room and hide. But there's a process we, we, we put in place for how you use the cluster. It's not an onerous process. It's just a process that makes sure that we do the best job of determining what's going to be on the cluster, what we're going to get out of it, and what the community is going to get out of it. I want to draw your attention to the, the URL where a lot of this information is listed. I spend some time there. There's templates and so forth for how you get submissions to the cluster. But basically, you make a request. And the request is based on um, user case details, what outcomes, benefits do you see, to the test, and a commitment, obviously, to, to, to share it upstream. There's a governance board in place to approve what you've requested. And this is not Intel dictating what's going to be on the cluster, not on the cluster. It's not Rackspace dictating what's on the cluster, what's not on the cluster. It's a combination of Intel, Rackspace, and the foundation. Intel has two people on the, on the, found, on the governance board. Rackspace will have one, and there'll be two folks from the foundation. So this is truly a community effort. We, we will decide that those five people will decide the best use of the cluster and will approve your request as it comes in. And not only approve it, but also prioritize it because we, we expect that everyone's going to want to use these clusters. We hope that that's the case. We want to make sure that we've got an opportunity to not only approve it, but to prioritize and make sure we allocate the best way possible. Assuming you get, get approved, you, you leverage the environment, you build the environment, you, you test, you fix, repeat, test, and finally, you share. And this is very important. One of the things we're going to expect to see in the request and we're going to expect to see out the other end is that you share documents in the way of white papers, operational guides, some type of product that you can share back with the community that was a result of the test that you did. And that's pretty critical to what we're, we're building here. So. Um, Again, it's not an onerous process. The details are at the URL. I suggest you spend some time there, but please, let's make use of this cluster. It's, 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 it's an investment we made because we recognize that one of these didn't exist in the community, and it was in many ways a stumbling block to doing the type of testing that we need to do to make OpenStack a viable alternative for cloud deployments. So bring us your, your requests, bring us your ideas, and let's test the process and let's test the the cluster out. Okay, Darren. Perfect. Thank you, David. Yep. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll bring us home. So the the summary of uh, of, of all of this, uh, and you see here a, a screenshot from the uh, the intake process. Um, this is uh, you know what you will receive if you go onto the website, uh, go.rackspace.com forward slash developer cloud. Uh, insert your name, email, contact information, and a little bit about what you want to do, why you want to do it, and what you uh, expect to gain, and what you expect the community to gain. And a team from Rackspace and Intel will be back in touch with you to uh, set up all appropriate access and uh, coordination required to get you started. Uh, the first thousand node uh, cluster is online and ready to go, so we hope people will uh, be directed to this process uh, starting immediately. Uh, over 200 of the 560 bugs have already been closed, uh, and the first roadmap for the next 12 months has been defined and uh, identified. This is an actual view of the first cluster, by the way, the, the, the pictures on the slides, not stock photos. Actual uh, views of, the, of the, uh, the racks and rows in the Rackspace data center. We also have uh, staffing continuing at a brisk, brisk pace. So uh, Intel continues to uh, invest in this uh, from not only the cluster standpoint, but in the hiring of talent, as does Rackspace. Uh, and we've also got some very interesting partnerships with the University of Texas San Antonio and other universities um, that are participating in driving internships and new job opportunities for people that are interested in becoming OpenStack developers. 
So with that, I will close out, and we will uh, give you guys a preview of a video that will roll tomorrow. And um, after the video rolls, we'll have time for questions. One of the reasons that the Intel partnership is so powerful is that we are philosophically aligned on the idea that we want enterprises to adopt this technology faster, and that we want everything that we do in this space to be fully open source and create nothing proprietary. I think one of the great things about the OpenStack Innovation Center is the commitment that leaders in the community and two companies with a great track record of innovation and maturity are making to strengthen the community. The OpenStack Innovation Center will have the largest OpenStack development team that is completely dedicated to make OpenStack you know, available for everybody, easy to use, easy to deploy, and very easy to manage. We both have domain expertise, and we both have common goals, and we have you know, a common vision. And hey, in a year from now, how should people be able to use OpenStack? How should the cloud be open for people? And it's just moving the needle on what an open data center really should be in this day and age. With the OpenStack Innovation Center and two companies that are committed to not only adding to the size of that talent pool, but also committed to fully open source contributions to the most impactful projects and features, it's fun to imagine how far the community is going to be able to go in the next five years. All right, so with that, uh, we have just a few minutes left. If anybody in the room has any questions for us as a panel, yeah, please use the microphone, absolutely. Thanks a lot. Uh, this is actually almost, you know, dream come true, like uh, we've been waiting for someone Excellent. to really support this kind of Excellent. awesome infrastructure and framework. So thank you. This is really, you know, glad to see all the stuff. Um, Perfect. I'm from Adobe, um, belong to IT Group. And we're dealing with a lot of variety of actual use cases. Uh, so some division fully based on AWS. And they don't even try to utilize you know, any type of private at all. Some division, they're in-house and VMware. And I'm part of kind of OpenStack team, so okay. OpenStack as well. OK. <laughs> so you're very good. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, it was the very first time to release really out. You are still the experiment in your own organization. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly perfect. Yeah. I'm kind of a very unique position at Adobe right now in terms of dealing with this okay. special, right. special type of private cloud. Okay, actually. good. The question is this one. First, I have two different, different complete questions. One is about this entire picture, and the okay. other is about the thousand nodes uh, clustering system. Okay. The first question about the entire framework is typically the problem where, when we ran into as an IT group is that Okay, a lot of question from user group like, okay, is some of the services already available in the AWS side, and it's been working awesome, and then perfectly meet their goals, and sometimes cost issue, whatever performance issue, try to look out another alternative, like let's say OpenStack. Mm -hmm. Then they're always asking the question, okay, this service is available in OpenStack here, and then can I just seamlessly migrate all the workflow without changing anything? in OpenStack, then of course, it you know, open up a lot of big deal, like okay, some cases, yeah, we can do that. Some cases, oh, well, it's not ready yet. So the thing is that when I look at the scalability and manageability, all those, yeah, definitely that's an awesome thing. Right. But one missing critical component that I can see now here, like, oh, um, we don't have to really compare all the time AWS, but AWS is kind of de facto public cloud system and, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of super user over there, like, you know, a lot of company utilizing, you know, their, you know, services based on AWS. And when they try to look out, utilize OpenStack, already the same question comes right. in. So I think probably, I don't know, the foundation itself or this framework itself, I don't know who, who can I talk to regarding this kind of, okay, who is really looking at this kind of, you know, missing part, like AWS versus something, or we try to, you know, have a gap? That's the first question. Right. You can sure. So, so do you want to take that one, Rishi? Yeah. So uh, please feel free to reach out to me. And uh, we have Krish Raghuram here, who's uh, actually driving this roadmap uh, with Rackspace and Intel together. So bet between Krish and I, we can definitely talk to you and get things included as part of that. Great, great. But I think those are exactly the kinds of, if, if there are perceived gaps that you're, when you're comparing it to features that you like and enjoy on AWS or VMware, 
and you want to see, I mean, obviously it's a little different with a, with a cloud architecture, but um, if, you, if you want to see similar features, if you want to see similar things on the roadmap, uh, absolutely we want to make sure that you, you in the community have a, have a chance to tell us, I'd like to see this on your roadmap. I think this is important as a user of this technology, or I think it's going to be important to Adobe. Adobe will never adopt this until you have you know, X, Y, or Z capability. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, second question. So second question about the thousand nodes uh, clustering system. Um, so right now we have a very small size of a very first release of OpenStack using uh, ISA version. version. Uh, it's been six months. It's awesomely working. We got already tons of positive feedback a lot. And I'm right now actually building out another bigger OpenStack environment using Kilo. Uh, we using very standard way of di building this OpenStack, uh, you know, Ubuntu host system and host OS with uh, uh, ML2, OBS, and Ceph as uh, our storage backend system. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is very common architecture based on 2015 survey. You know, most of you know, people, more than 50% using this kind of structure. Then this clustering system supporting that matching architecture, meaning is that the Ceph, when, when you guys you know, build out Ceph, uh, some of data node has very, you know, requiring very specialty, like you need to have a SSD uh, to deal with this F functionality or something like that, right? So this also has flexible f flexibility to provide such a uh, targeting infrastructure as well. Well, there's, 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 I think there's two things there. One, the, the developer cloud, the, the, the primary purpose of the developer cloud is for access for developers that are writing and wanting to test code um, across scale. The, there's a, there's a, there's a certain reference architecture and a, a way of deploying on the, the two clusters that is, at least on you know, the, the first thousand nodes, um, may be restricted to just doing anything under the sun. I don't, from the Intel perspective, you guys are thinking a lot more about uh, on the next thousand how you can test all kinds of other technology and combinations. So, and I think, you know, even on the first thousand nodes, if they are just nodes, Ceph does, is not, Ceph is the software which they will put. If they have access to bare metal, you know, you put whatever on it, whether you put Ceph or you put anything else, it's going to be doable. So, uh, in my answer, simple answer would be yes. We'll have to work through how uh, part of it because that's part of the pilot. Ideally, ideally, it's not just Ceph alone, but it's Ceph or whatever you're using in conjunction with OpenStack to get the benefit of the, the contribution back to the community. Just, yeah, just remember that anything that you want to bring to the developer cloud and have an idea for how it will impact or affect or uh, effectively impact the community at large. I mean, it's going to be hard for us to solve point problems for individual users of OpenStack. So just be thinking about what do you want to bring to the table that uh, the community will be able to, cont to uh, benefit from you bringing and testing and, and deploying in that environment. Okay. Sounds good. Perfect. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we are pretty much interested in utilizing this in infrastructure for, our, for a lot of kind of testing. So it's going to be really useful. Very good. Well, thank you for your comments and Thanks questions. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you guys again for being the, the late in the day audience and uh, enjoy the rest of the summit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.